tea for me, so I'm very happy. Okay. So nice, so blessed. Ah, alhamdulillah. So you, you know what's what's happening, please. Eh? Uh, what is to uh, to be expected? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Tuanaji. So I will start with my introduction and my journey, the challenges that I went through. Yeah, and then, so our general advice to our fellow Muslim and also those who are thinking about embracing Islam. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Because uh, the audience is uh, also non-Muslims, eh? so I, I think you know that lah. it's not only for Muslims. It's an open mm -hmm. uh, domain, so okay. Uh, you, if you know that, it's good. And uh, whatever you think is right, uh, please, please do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Well, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very, good, a very good evening and a very warm welcome to everyone on to tonight, yet another episode of My Journey to Islam and exclusively produced to all of you by Axin, Allied Coordinating Council of Islamic NGO. Well, so I can see friends on our Facebook and I would like to invite all of you who are on Facebook to click like and to share, click like and click share. This is the little, little effort of dakwah that every one of us can do by just clicking the button share, all right? So inshallah, the program can be shared with many, many other friends out there globally. So first of all, my name is Elaine Aisha. I'll be the moderator for tonight. And with me tonight online here in the Zoom room here, we have our very dear, CEO of Axin. Haji Jamal, how are you? Fine, thank you, Elaine. Thank you, Chris. How are you? Hi, hi. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we have our very special um, sharer, our, our special guest tonight here. I must say, out of so many episodes, tonight we have the youngest speaker with us, or the youngest guest. Yeah? Thank you so much for being with us, uh, Brother Chris. Thank you, thank you, Miss Alain. Right, good. So thank you, Haji Jamal, for getting yet another uh, young, inspiring guest to be on the program with us tonight. Yeah, truly inspiring, yes. Right, <laughs> good. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. You are very humble. We had a chance to have a quick run through of um, the story of Brother Krish yesterday. And today, I'm just, I can't wait. You know, I'm actually inviting all my friends here sharing the link to all of them meanwhile uh yeah many are actually coming on board because uh you are one of the youngest uh, guests that we have so far oh, okay. and i believe yes, yeah. a lot of young um uh, community and also friends who are very eager to hear from you all right so good so just a little bit mm. about the program um while waiting for more friends to come in so we have run this program haji jamal i think what two years more than two years, yeah. More than two years. Two years yeah. Coming to the third year, yes. Yeah. MashaAllah. Yeah. Right, so this program basically uh, has been carrying out like every month, once a month. And we have our brothers and sisters reverts from all over the world. And we invite them on program, onto the program. And that's where they share their journey to Islam. Right, so we have some elder elderly ones. I have we have some very active who has been running dakwas, um, uh, brothers and sisters, and um, yeah, we have all kind of um, personalities with us so far. So yeah, um, right. So a little bit um introduction about our brother tonight. So our um, guest tonight, Krish Umar. Right yes, on the poster yes. yesterday, I was saying the name right. It was formerly known as. Krishna Kumar. And now yeah. he is Krish Umar. Not and much difference. Sorry, how do I a, You can just say Krish Umar. Krish Umar, yeah. Krish Umar, so yeah. um okay. at the moment you are a you I, I read your, your bio data, you specialize okay. in digital marketing communications. Yeah, and then yeah. yeah, basically um our brother Krish is his specialty, so-called his um uh, specialization is in the logistics field but at the moment he's the um, activist writer media uh, for a media porter and also co-founder for stories of pm portal I, I didn't know how to pronounce that i'm gonna leave it to him <laughs> to explain yeah. later right okay. and but what's interesting it's like he was formally engaged and involved with some gangster or some oh, gangster. I'm going to leave him to tell you. <laughs> so some yeah. gangster activities. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and how did he actually came out from that gangsterism, those activities, and decided to embrace Islam? That's what we're going to have a chat with him tonight, right? So um, I'm going to pass the mic over to uh, Haji Jamal, maybe you have, uh, tell us how did you get to know Brother Krish and got him onto the program? 
Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, I think uh, I knew him in uh, just May this year, where we were representing Malaysia, attending the Intercity Dialogue Conference uh, by Kaisit. Kaisit is the King Abdul Aziz Center for uh, uh, Inter-Civilizational and Intercultural Center. Uh, this is a is an organization that encourages uh, encourages um, uh, intercivilizational and intercultural dialogue. You know, it's only with dialogue that we get to know each other, and we try to reduce the gap in our expectations and our beliefs and our positions. So uh, they have been quite active, and they had this conference in Bangkok. Uh, it is an intercity uh, dialogue, uh, and it was uh, for the cities in Southeast Asia. It was in Bangkok for about uh, three, four days in a very nice setting, uh, overlooking the Chow Menam Chow Praya, the Chow Praya River, on the Sheraton Hotel. It was a very comfortable, very nice uh, three-day session where we really uh, learned a lot. And uh, we discussed a lot with delegates from all over Southeast Asia, eh? from Singapore, uh, Indonesia, from uh, Thailand. I think there was some from Cambodia uh, and all over. And also a lot of them from the headquarters from Portugal. So that's where uh, Chris was also one of the members. And, and we had long discussions. And uh, after that, I asked him to, to, to come on the show. And he said, OK. So it's here now. So welcome, Krish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anjuma. Mashallah. Yeah. Mashallah. That is how you guys met all the way in Bangkok. Yeah, sister. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Right. Good, good. Thank you so much for, you know, being with us. And yeah, so I'm going to pass the mic over to Brother Krish. Um, tell us briefly, like, where are you from? Um, you know, a bit of your family background. And what did you study and what are you doing now? And we'll chat along. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sister Elaine. Just before I introduce myself, let me uh, greet everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to everyone, those viewers, to Tuan Jamal who invite me, and also you, Sister Elaine, and also our brother who are working in background, Brother Kamal. Kamal, is it? Kamil. Kamil. <laughs> Kamil. So uh, yes. uh, uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's been a wonderful journey. Been learning a lot. Uh, so I hope our my my sharing will, will be an eye opener or give some insight about my my journey. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm Krish Kumar. I'm an activist, a writer and also a media portal, portal handler, Stories of TM. So I've been working with both local and international NGOs. And recently, I represent Malaysia for the Interfaith Southeast Asia Conference Dialogue in Thailand. And other than being an activist, a social media a handler, a writer, and also a budding speaker, I'm also we are also going to launch our own organization called Tampa Terminal Perpaduan Masyarakat. So I can say that lots of works, lots of things been going on and we are going to do. And I work as a logistic exec, logistic exec at a company in Monkiara. So Monday to Friday, I will be working as a logistic exec. And then Saturday, Sunday, I will do my activism, activism, social service and related activities. So uh, behind all these uh, little achievement or things that I'm doing, uh, I got some, 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 some different background. Mm -hmm. So basically, I, uh, so uh, different or what we can say, uh, a terror background. <laughs> so I, I, I was basically a village boy. So we, I migrated to city with my parents at a young age, maybe when I was around nine or 10 years old. So you can be, you know that it's not easy to adapt a different lifestyle coming from a village, adapting a new lifestyle in cities. 
So still, while I was adapting a new atmosphere in the cities, I was bullied in the in the in at my neighborhood area, and I was bullied in my neighborhood area, and I have difficulties adjusting in the school atmosphere. And I also have uh, difficulties, so I grow in a situation where we got some issues or problems in my family. Mm. So basically, for for the next five to seven eight years, I will grow in that situation. So in so growing in that situation, I got some inferiority complex. Inferiority complex means I won't talk with people, uh, I won't share with people because. You you can sense how how horrible or how unstable the situation around me. So uh, right after I finish my STPM, I can say that's the turning point in my life where all those uh, kept inside feeling just burst and and until I hit back my, those my bully, the people who bullied me, and then that's the phase where. The problems in my family gets to the serious, serious level, serious level. And then, when when, when these two incidents combine, I, I hit back those the people who bullied me, and then the problems or issues between my parents escalated until to the the peak. And then I slowly got the got the touch, or I really start to connect with the gangster groups. Because I got some, some I can say that they are a bit caring. Those things that I didn't get from the family or the protection, I feel from the I get I I can sense that I, I can get from the gangster group. And mm. when I when I hit back those who bully me, I got a feel of satisfaction. Oh, okay, that's nice. So this is how we feel when we express those feelings that we kept inside. So like a revenge some, kind of feeling. yeah yeah so so it's kind of kind of because we've been pushed mentally we've been compressed uh, both physically and mentally and then we got an opportunity to express ourselves and then I just grab the chance mm. okay just grab the chance and then uh, while continuing my STPM mm. I slowly involved with a lot of friends who are involved in gangster groups and I mm. used to know many of the important or those top ones. And then right after, uh, so basically I was doing my STPM and also involving in the gangster related activities. So right after finish my STPM, even though I got a, actually, I don't mean to be a gangster. I don't, it's not my intention to be uh, a, a full-time gangster or all that like hurting people or doing nasty thing, but my situation forced me to into it. And then, but I got an excellent result. I am academically smart student, right from my UPSR until STPM. And I got excellent result in Sujara, BM, science, uh, economics, moral, and many subjects you, you can say. And I also a very religious person mm -hmm. since I was a kid. I've been a champion of uh, mm. Devaram reciting competition, a sacred Hindu sacred text reciting competition in my district, Bangsa. So I got the first place, I'm a champion. So basically I know about Hinduism, the basic things, the mantras, the Vedas at a very, very young age. So back to my, mm. my, my gangster transition period. So right after I got my STPM result, mm. I got a uh, 2.5, if not mistaken, a grade. And I didn't continue my further, my higher, higher studies. I just, uh, when I start see the money, it's, I think it's a normal thing when a young guy see a lot of money at a young age, they don't have the interest to continue studying. So they will involve fully in the gangsterism related activity. So I too, after right after my STPM, I didn't continue. I just involved with, with the gangster members, mem gangster group members, do, going with them, doing some, some bad things, uh, going to pubs. Uh, getting no like like drinking going to the pub so basically for two to three years i've been following those seniors those elders doing all this time until on mm -hmm. until a, a incident happened on 30th december 2012 when i was 21 years old now i am 32 years old so what happened is uh, right after i finished a birthday party a friend of mine 
uh, right after while I was getting out from the place, a person that I know, they basically, they are also gangsters. Uh, they are belong to a gangster group that I know. So they ambush me and start to hit me in a drunken state. So they hit me so severely until I got a crack in my head. Uh, the place mm -hmm. that I was hit and I was lying was full of, of my own blood. And I was at the moment I was thought that okay I think I I, I will die here because uh, because they are using basically everything that they have got in their hand uh, helmets uh, metal locks everything they hit me until for around thirty minutes then after thirty minutes I think a, fa a family friend uh, fa family of my friend was staying nearby heard my screaming and they they come and basically they are pulling me away from the place that they are they are hitting me and save me. And then they call the police and then happened some, some things, incident there. And that incident, after that incident, I survived from that. It caused me to think a lot. So the, the, mm. the people that are supposed to protect me, the people that are supposed to come for me, they say that, okay, in gangster world, we will protect you. We are like brothers. We, are, we will uh, come at any time. Yeah, brotherhood. Those people that say the words, those words didn't appear, didn't come mm. support me. And it's a, it's a big story. Okay, it's a big story. And then that, that thing, that incident made me realize. And I start to think, hey, why, why like this? Isn't they supposed to save me? And then at one point, I got some swarahati. What we, we say in English, swarahati, inner voice is it? Okay, and in a voice mm. say that, hey, you see, you are a smart, you are a smart boy, you're somehow involved in gangsterism. Now you learn that this is not life. It's just a fake love. Then I got a, a realization from then, and then I, I decided, okay, get up from all the gangster group link uh, from this circle. But it's not an easy process. It took me around two to three months to get from it, to get my mental a bit stable. And then I start my journey from there. Uh, from there, it took another one to two years for me to stable in all aspects from my job, from my, from my characteristic, from my path, where I'm mm. going. So in, this, in that phase, in the uh, one year's phase, I got almost a high depression because I got no one to guide me because in my family, my parents, they are focusing their problems. They got their own issues. And then my friend's circle, they are not helpful at that time. And then uh, compared to nowadays, nowadays, I think we have a lot of help center, mental help center, for example, like Brief Enders, Taliano. But way back then in 2013, we don't have much, much thing back then. And also we don't have that exposure. I think even social media also still new at that time. So at, uh, so at the point where I don't have anyone to guide me, so anyone to give a support, so any, I don't have basically anyone to seek advice. So I got high depression and one point I almost went to the ninth floor, the top of my apartment, and the, I decided, okay, to kill myself, suicide. So I, 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 I just go up to the ninth floor and, I, and my right leg is already ready to jump. I, I don't have any fear. I'm, I'm just looking clear on down of the road, ready to jump. And then I hear another voice. I was basically almost ready. I can say that 80 to 90% I'm ready to jump from top of my apartment. And then I hear in a small voice, just say, hey, hold down. Hey, just stop. Um, and then it, um, I can't recall 100% what it say, but it's similar. Like it say that, uh, hey, don't jump. You got some, some things to look upon. You got a long way to go. Just don't do it. So that may, the, the minor voice just keep on say that, say that. I think if other person was in my place, I think they will just follow the what the main or majority voice say. They will just jump off. But I, at that point, just hold for a moment and start to think, okay, let's hear what this small voice say. And then start my, my, my new journey. So from there, I, I, I make sure I, got a, I get, a, get, get a good job. I enhance my skill. I sharpen my skill. I find out in which field that I'm interested. So I pursue that field, which is basically the logistic that I'm working now. So once I, I make sure I get a good job, I, my work is stable financially, I'm stable. 
And then I want to contribute back to the society because of the thing that I saw, the thing that I went through, I want to make the awareness, but I don't know how and what to do. So I, I, mm. I, I saw in Facebook, there was an Indian NGO and, and leader. He was saying that he, he, they are doing a lot of activities for the community. They are doing a, a awareness thing. Then I decided, okay, why not joining them? And when joining them, I can learn and also I can contribute to the society. So from there, my journey started in the field of activism, 2015. I started my journey with that particular Indian NGO. And my journey with Indian, basically, I, at that time, I was more focused on the Indian NGO from 2015 and 2019. So in that period, I worked with almost four to five NGOs. From one NGO, I jumped to another NGO because basically, even in NGOs also, we have issues, problems, like what happened in the political field, like what we saw, like the politicians are fighting each other, they got a hidden agenda, they are saying something outside and inside are different. So basically, they're applicable to some of these NGOs. So when I saw the problems is there, I came from, because my intention is to serve the people, to contribute or do the awareness genuinely. So mm -hmm. if I so when I aware that they, they got some issues, the leader are not genuine, they got their hidden NGO agenda, then I decided, okay, it's not good. And from there, I jumped to one NGO to almost four to five NGO before eventually I create, or I, me and my friends, we create another NGO. We, all, we register ourselves in that period. And then a thing happened on year 2019 where I got the opportunity to go to visit my long, long relative in Tamil Nadu with my, with my family, with my fathers. And that incident may make a, another turning point in my life. So basically, I've been in India, Tamil Nadu for over a week. And the thing that I saw there made me, or uh, the inner voice say a lot of things that when, when back to Malaysia, those things that I saw in India, Tamil Nadu, made me to think that, okay, I have, uh, I have now, I have to bigger my scope, bigger my network. I have to make the things that I do much more universal. <coughs> so what I saw in India is when I was visiting the, my, my long relative with my, with my family, there are still caste discrimination in name of religion. For example, my, my, I, go, I, I, saw two, uh, I saw my relative in two angles, one, two perspective. One, the, one side of relative, they are doing well, even though they, they, they feel they've been discriminated. They, they say that they are low caste people. According, according to, the, to, the, to the caste system, they are considered as a low caste people, but they are doing well. But on, and the same low caste people on the other side, they they are not doing well and they are they were keep outside of the village and we have to park our car and I have to walk around 10 to 15 minutes to go to their place and then i asked back to my relative why why this caste system why people are being divided in name of religion then they explained the the, the thing the history the system over there and then after come back malaysia i think how grateful i'm being born here and i think i have to make awareness on this thing among malaysians here so if I want to make an awareness among Malaysian here, I just can't focus on the Indian or Tamil community. I have to work with the Malay and the Chinese and basically everyone. So from there, from there on, I decided that, okay, uh, get out from all the Indian, not fully cut the ties with the Indian NGO. I will still work with them, but I will start a new journey or start work with the Malay or, or English, etc. The, the other NGOs. So from there, I, I start to write, okay, how I want to express those things that I saw in Tamil Nadu, India, how I want to express those, the, the ideas or thoughts that I, I got. Then I got an idea, okay, why not you write? Because I can write a bit well in Basam Layu. So I write many articles of various topics in, in, in Basam Layu. And I share it in my Facebook profile and also in the media portal that I own, the stories of TM. And among all the article, one article specifically, it went viral, which titled Palestinian crisis is not a religious thing, but it's a humanitarian crisis. And the article 
went so viral until been shared around 8000 plus people and then from there i got the exposure from or connection with with some bigger group and also uh, institution like university malaya uh, dewan bahasa dan pustaka pertubuhan igram and many many ngos and from there on i start to collaborate or work together done programs with them and yeah it's a it's an, another new journey another new phases working with a lot of people and from there on i got a link or connection with international ngos for example like phoenix tng uh, trc and etc we got a lot of and with them i i start to talk or we start to do activities related human human rights and also uh, youth empowerment so Th that's the thing that's how it goes and then earlier this year i got the opportunity to represent malaysia and from and and that the play point where i met one jamal we went to thailand i've been selected by a professor at university of malaya and then from there after from there afterwards i got a few conference that i involved activities programs and i can say that to this year been so fantastic so Oh, uh, at the at this point i already explained my my growth my Wrong. my 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 phases okay now back to my religious 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 faith or my religious understanding okay last year last year when i almost uh, well settled down i already got a mission okay i already got the connection and ready to execute everything basic which is basically this year then i got a, a thought that okay uh, I already got, or I already got an idea how I'm going to be in future. But regard the religious, religious thing, I still got a space in my heart. I was, I was, I got actually even with, la, way back before last year. I few years ago, I have a lot of questions inside myself. Uh, whether when I went to India or when I was a kid or involved in a gangsterism or. Uh, different faith. I have a lot of question on my on my faith on my on my previous faith, and I start to ask with many people. Okay, what is this? Why we are going to the temple? Why we are praying? What is the meaning of the of this? Because as we age, our understanding on the text on the on the procedure will change. The thing that I learned when I was young is was totally different when I grew older. And after I went to India, see the things there, the class discrimination, etc. And then when I start to ask people related this thing, related the 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 religion, mm. I find that many people can't give me a, a a satisfaction answer, and many even don't know what's inside the sacred text, uh, which is basically the Vedas. And then. Uh, I, I start to ask myself, okay, if I believe that I got the protection from the God, because if there is no guidance from the God, it's not it's it's almost impossible to get through all these phases from from coming from uh, unstable family and then uh, suicidal uh, escaping suicidal uh, thoughts and then the the murder things all and then get get a being better in life and then uh, doing something to the community so i think it's not possible without guidance or without the blessings from the god and then so the god must be special right so the god must be special and and from there i uh, when i didn't find the answer when, when i didn't get the answer from the people from the from my surrounding and those things that I read and, and then I start to seek from from Islam okay why not because I've been a, a good student in history subject so I know about Islam and Rasulullah even when I was studying in my secondary school so and then I think okay why not you explore more about Islam then maybe you get some answer for your for your for your questions or your for, for your journey and then from there after I when I after I, I done analysis or study my religion and then only I start my journey or study on Islam so basically mm -hmm. I start ask with my Malay friend 
I actually got a Palestinian friend, a different race of people who are, who are practicing Islam. So I get each of their perspective of, of what is Islam. And then I learn more about Islam. Then I start to realize, okay, uh, what I find in, the, in my, in my uh, findings or in my study that I got a lot of uh, similarities or the principle that I, I, I hold or I believe most of the principle is in Islam. And then one thing is, uh, I, I like Rasulullah a lot. Even when I was in secondary school, the way the leadership, uh, the way how Rasulullah show a good example as a as an individual, as a leader of a family, as a leader of a nation, of a community, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I start to realize that uh, in my long journey, there are few qualities or few things that I've been following without I realized that all got connection with Islam and Rasulullah. And I got, basically, I got a, a bit of goosebumps, a bit of excited, oh, okay. Without, I realized, I already have all the connection, all the things related to them. And then uh, another story, I can say that story of Bilal bin Rabbah impact me a lot. Uh, because all of us know who is Bilal bin Rabbah. He's basically a, a slave who later been freed by Rasulullah. And then he's... He, uh, the Highness is the first Muazin in Islam. So R R Muazin, Bilal bin Rabah's stories, and then my uh, the stories of Rasulullah and the principle and the things that I got from Islam when I when I do the study, I feel connected. Okay, okay, this is the thing that that I I am looking. Okay, this is the thing that I should explore, pursue, and then I decided. Okay, I'm going to embrace Islam on December last year, basically. And then I informed my friend, my Malay friend, my best friend, Fitri and Shafiq, that, okay, I'm going to embrace Islam on my birthday because a uh, lot of bad things happened on my birthday uh, previously. So I want the next birthday, want something a special, a special, a memorable thing on my birthday. So I want to embrace and register my status, which is basically on 12th July. So I informed them way back on December. So what happened in this period is, uh, so basically I was involved in NGOs activities, uh, doing my works and the process been going on. And then on, uh, on Ramadan month specifically, uh, a week before I pronounced my Shada, I went to Penang, uh, not on, I went to Penang, we have some activities and the friends over there, they, they simply asked, hey Chris, when you are going to embrace Islam? And, was, and I was kind of shocked. How they know I'm going to embrace Islam? Then I, then I asked them, hey, how you know uh, that I'm going to embrace Islam? They, they say that from the way that you speak, the way that you are doing, we already have a sense that you will embrace Islam. So, so I just purposely asked, and I don't know that you are already in plans of embracing Islam. So from there, I can, the, the, the linking point or the, the, the signs is already shown there. Okay, on, after yes, that, yes. what happened? Yeah, so after that, um, so basically I, I've been fasting for the last two two years, a full fasting with my even um, before my you friends. embrace even before you embrace Islam, you started to, to practice and fast. Yeah, yeah. I already right. uh, start practicing uh, fasting. Uh, right. so uh, so basically this year also I, I start fasting. And then on on the day, on 25th day Ramadan, basically we have an event with our Palestinian friend in Hotel Flamingo, Ampang. So they invite me for a babuka pasa, iftar. So I went there, when went there for babuka pasa. Uh, actually, I before before going there, I was got another trip to Penang. So in morning I went to Penang, settled my thing, the meetings there, and right on the same day I I make sure I make it to the to the event at the Hotel Flamingo. So Alhamdulillah, I I, I arrived the place on time, and then uh, Babuka Ifta together with them, and then I saw a, a Tamil sister who is from Hidayah Center Foundation. So basically, uh, we were we were talking ourselves. We've been introducing. We've been we've been sharing about our background. She herself was a, a revered Muslim. Right. 
and yeah she been serving in hidayah center foundation and then at one point she asked about my what is my religious stand and then i say that okay no more uh, practicing hinduism uh, then i share about what is tamil what is difference in indians uh, about basically my family and etc and then i say that i've been fasting for the past two years and i admire rasulullah a lot uh this is my principal life and then after hear my story she she say that hey you already uh, listening to your story listening to your background i can conclude that you are already a half muslim or you are almost a muslim but there is a one thing that you have to do what you are going to do on your birthday is a legal process registering your name and etc but now you have to do something heartfully and i ask her what's what's that she say that you have to beriman kepada allah you have to pronounce mashada oh is it uh, actually i i don't know what what's that nobody to, uh, told that before okay nobody what told that yeah no nobody told that uh, because when i uh, when i share with everyone that i'm going to embrace islam on 12 july on my birthday they say okay that's good just carry on uh, but they didn't tell the difference specifically that, yeah because uh, because what the thing that i'm i'm to do in the javi office is basically registering my islam name right But since i already follow the the basic thing in islam which is fasting i'm believing in allah believing the in belief. rasulullah admiring yeah the belief the, the basic belief i already uh, ask muslim but one thing i i didn't pronounce the shahada which is uh, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadar rasulullah so so i i i, I didn't know that what's the meaning behind that and, and i don't know how to pronounce that so the the sister from hidayah center foundation then he he helped me he explain everything what is rukun islam what is rukun iman and then what is my responsibility after pronounce the shahada so so after she explained everything i didn't have any second thought i just pronounced my shahada in the in the event itself in the uh, iftar event with the ngos with the palestinian friend uh it's a kind of it's, it's still like a it's like magical moment because i planned something because i i planned that i want to do a simple uh, embracing this with my friend i even mm-hmm. tell to my friend that okay you two are going to be my witness when i register and we are going to do in this way uh, basically uh, just a, a a normal one but then uh, allah make it so grand Allah nice. make it so grand and I pronounce my shahada not only in front of the sister but and then I was called upon to the stage and I pronounce my shahada in front all of the uh, those people who, who came from the for the for the iftar. event for the iftar if for the iftar event and then inshallah yeah so another one thing that happened is uh, I already mentioned earlier that I admire Rasulullah and Bilal bin Rabah a lot and those stories and the stories of both your story impact a lot of my journey and and my life and then as you know once we pronounce shada we have to hug someone right for the for the for the new new brothers in it. so the i can't hug miss miss uh, chesu because she's a lady after pronounce shada so they go and find a, a guy to pronounce so, so so i can repeat the the shada again and they can hug me and they can go to the next next process and then they go and find a brother and the brother they find and and the brother that they find who came and hug me and asked to say pronounce shada is his name is also bilal so when i when i when i pronounce back the shahada and then uh, i hug him and ask brother what's your name and he say is bilal i got another shock uh, it's basically another gusbab because mm-hmm. i didn't expect okay when i uh, uh, bilal is one of the person that i admire a lot and in my shahada process the the person who asked me to pronounce my shahada again is it's bilal and and we oh, didn't sure. plan and we didn't plan for this thing to be happen and and start there after i can say that for the for the one week until the first shower it's been so magical uh, the, the the following day i i went to kapavina i think she is a very important person in my life to kapavina so i went with her to to mosque at the damansara al mukarrama 
So I went there, they introduced me to the, the Imam of the Masjid, who is basically a Sheikh from Masjid. So we're sharing a lot of stories with them. And he said that, okay, we can see something in your face. You got, you got a lot of things to go through. The real challenge is start after this. You have to believe. You have to keep your song faith. So what have you, you have to learn? And then he said that, okay, we are going to do our Salat Trawe. Uh, you, actually, you are now a, basically a newborn baby. You don't just force anything yourself. Don't try to, to imitate or anything. Just, just see. Just observe what they are doing. And then, okay, right. uh, after, so after we buka pasta, we break our fast, and then I joined them for, the, for my first mm. Salat Trawe in Masjid al Mufarrama. And I, 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 uh, I feel, I saw what is basically Salat. So what they, are, what, what they are doing. And before that, before I went to the mosque, I already have a bit, uh, I already study or I already uh, learned how to take a voodoo. So right before I went to the mosque, I already take my voodoo. And uh, sis the sister that bring me, she, uh, Pawina, she has, did you take your voodoo? Uh, yes, I say, just yes. yes. How, how you take? Did anyone teach? No, I just learned myself. Okay, that's good. So I think I already prepare, right. prepare, or prepare the thing, uh, learn myself before, see the imam of the masjid. So right, right after... Brother Kirish, okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm going to take a pause uh, for a while. I know you've been telling your journey from, uh, from way back. Okay, I'm just do a little recap because we have some new, uh, fans and also audience here. So basically, um, we have our one of our youngest, um, sharer and also our guest here tonight at my journey to Islam, uh, Brother Krish Umar, at the age of thirty two. And he basically had actually, you know, went through struggle in his life, you know, in um, a low, low self-esteem, moving from um, village to big city, and then gotten himself into some gangsterism activities, and then almost commit su committed suicide, and then how he actually pulled himself out. You know, until today, he's actually representing Malaysia at many of these um, events. Yeah, and make himself proud and also make his family proud, make Malaysia proud. Now, we have one question here just um, before we move on. That's, um, thank you all our fans here on Facebook. Yeah, walaikum salam. Right, so we have one question here, brother, for you. Now, um, from our fan here, J. Abdullah, he said he have a lot of friends from India and many of them are educated very good engineers right so i just he was just wondering what are the typical barriers for them to study islam what 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 is it in your opinion because i think this question was posted to you because uh, as you mentioned you did very well in your academic yeah academic doing very well and all that so we always seen that maybe people see that islam or you know people who embrace islam maybe for for whatever reason but we can see that there are many intellectual and also academician who actually uh, embrace islam so but in your opinion what are some of the barriers among these friends from india that prevent uh, them or you know like barriers for them to join or uh, to study islam by the way El elena uh, uh, engineer abdullah hassan is based in saudi you know so he's working with Aramco, and uh, these are the engineers based in Saudi. So he's, he's watching from Saudi Arabia. Yes. Please, please. Thank you. Thank you, Haji Jamal. So, yeah, thank you for joining us, uh, Cik Abdullah Hassan, all the way from Saudi. Am uh, I Yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, Brother Krish, any comment from you? Uh, okay, Sister Rena, in my uh, opinion, or for my view, I think the barrier that cause uh, Indian friends or non-Muslim from learning about Islam is, I think there are a lot of misconception, misconception, and uh, there are a lot of things that they don't know. For example. Okay, uh, in India, in India, there, there, there have been some ideologies or there have been some 
groups politically they are spreading uh, propaganda saying that uh, islam is is not native to the indian land islam is is uh, is a part of the the hindu is a, they got lots of things going on and they say that uh, it's it's uh, it's totally a outsider religion or outsider faith is going to divide these things and even when i i uh, uh, in the process right, right before i uh, i convert embrace islam uh, when I'm way back on december when i have the intention to embrace islam i make sure first i learn what is my original religion and then i i inform my family my friends and also all my circle that okay ask anything about hinduism and also ask anything about islam if i unable to answer any one of your questions i will not embrace islam so basically they come up with each and every of them they come up with lot of question lot of questions lot of accusation lots of concern and what i saw from them is from their question is okay they 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 have a very wrong thought. they they basically don't know what, what is islam they think that if we embrace islam we are going to be a different species we may be a bear from 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 human we will become a dinosaur or sort things of like that so i explained to them what is what is islam uh, what is uh, the difference between race Uh, religion uh, language and when i explain to them when i give answer to them and also ask question to them and they start to realize oh okay islam basically it's a way, it's a way of like this is a thing that being teach in here in hinduism we have lot of things that we have to find find and we have to study and make ourselves clear so what i can say uh, sister elaine the barrier that that prevent the indians or non muslim from learning about islam is the misconception or the wrong fact or we can say uh miscommunication misconception and also miscommunication there is no proper communication yeah. or maybe we can say we we can say that we maybe we don't have a di- inter- uh, effective interfaith dialogue so we can discuss both things concern or both things a question Right. So basically, there's a lot of it's still a lot of mis misperception, um, mis uh, perception towards Islam, which lead to yeah. um, Abdullah's second question, which I think it's quite mm-hmm. relevant, that he mentioned here. He still remember one of my he he's saying that I still remember one of my Indian friend from India mentioned to me, nobody invited me to become Muslim. It is like something what you mentioned just now that no one had told you about the ujab dua kalimah syahada ya. So yeah. his question is, what are simple things to do to convey the message of Islam to others? Yeah, I, I, you get what the question is. So basically, it's like no one, and I heard this from quite of my quite a few of my non-Muslim friends as well. They were like, but nobody told us. So now the question here is like. Maybe you should consider like, what are the some of the simple thing we can do to convey the message of Islam to others. Yeah, I think it's an interesting question. Yeah, how what are the things we do? I I think in previous episode, uh, there were a similar question, and then we were saying that yeah, basically many many Muslims are not ready to dawah. not ready to to kind of um dawa because many think that they are not ready they are not good enough they themselves are also not good in terms of religions but we did also discuss saying that but simple little thing simple little gesture that we do for example during hari raya we we cook a lot of rendang or cook a food or what we just give it to our neighbor that could be one small little kind gesture to showcase our 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 behavior or characteristic being a muslim yeah yeah so if you have anything to add on i agree so with you i think we i think the best simple way that we can convey what is islam is through ourselves uh, mm. as an individual we can show a good example mm. uh, and for that we we have to learn we have to make sure 
get the knowledge because through knowledge we can create the awareness and also share what it is done. what i saw nowadays is even among uh, uh, some of my uh, muslim uh, muslim friends they actually don't know how to talk or how to convey the message so that's mm -hmm. why then so when i share the information or the knowledge okay this is the thing this is the thing, then when they get the idea they can share it with others they can mm -hmm. they can they can they can show it because mm -hmm. if we i know islam just not only from my understanding but i saw from people okay uh, of course we we still got some bad apples among ourselves but we got a lot of good things so i i saw and i learned from them okay this is the thing so when i follow them when i when i feel them and then they said okay this is the thing that i look upon so then i embrace that so i think the basic simple thing is every one each one of us is we can start act instead of expecting others to do that we can start from ourselves okay we can think from from universe okay start by sharing love and i think that's the main basic thing is what islam is all about islam is all about love and peace so i think we have to start that thing okay show them what is peace what is love and what islam show that right i i totally agree with you there are just so so many small little basic thing that everyone can do um to to showcase to show the message of islam even a, a small sadaqah and all that so thank you very much uh, ji abdullah for your two very good questions that actually keep us uh, reminded that it's our it's our responsibility actually in doing our part to convey Islam. Yeah, so before we get off, it's time flies, it's an hour already, brother. So just before we, we end, come to an end of today's program, I would like to ask uh, one last comment from brother Krish, particularly for your Indian fellow friends, yeah, particularly in from that community. What, maybe that's something that you would like to tell them, or maybe your Indian friends who are thinking of finding out more about Islam. So any message, anything that you, you, you would like to tell them? Uh, yes, it's certain. One thing that I find is, uh, there is some problems in Indian community, especially when someone uh, embrace or convert to Islam, there will be some section of groups that will say, mm -hmm. hey, uh, he convert purpose just for money or for women, or he got some things uh, they all always have this wrong misconception. Some so agenda, uh, like yeah, some the, agenda. The agenda. They 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 never see from the religious perspective, spiritualism perspective. So I just even I, I share this thought or, or this thing with my fellow Indians. I just say to them that okay, instead of saying or condemning those who uh, convert to Islam or embracing Islam, why not you learn more about your religion? Okay, I embrace. Okay, my journey is, is like this. I decide this for my spiritual supplement. Okay, I I say because I already learned. I already know the basic. What's inside the Hinduism? Then I I go to my new journey. But you people, you when I ask most of my Indian friends, especially my Hindu friend, they don't know what's really inside the Vedas. Why? What's the uh, the meaning or significance behind each of the procedures? So basically, you you don't know about yourself, about about your worshiping thing, and then you are condemning someone who are going to the other side without knowing what caused them to go to go to the other side. Right. Of course, we got some section of people who are who got their own hidden agenda, and they are giving some bad image of Mola. We are we are not saying it's not happening. It's happening, yes. but but majority things it. But majority people who are embracing Islam is based on spiritual thing. They 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 feel that they aware that they find the peace. They find the love in Islam. And my and my reason I can say that I think I, my close circle, my friends, almost everyone knows the main reason I embrace Islam is all about love and peace. I find the love in Islam. I find the love when I solat with the people. I can feel the the togetherness, 
and the concept the god okay we, we say that god is something is so special so unique definitely a god who is so mighty so big he the god won't have any definition he won't even any space and i that's why we call him space how can we imagine or create us god in in the, in a statue and how i can say that as a as a, as a god and if like mm. that means anyone can create god anyone can create the statue right so these are the these are the things that cause me to think okay uh for in my concept my god is someone who is something which is so special so when i when i find that speciality is in islam then i embrace and then the person who share the philosophy rasulullah basically that person has a, such a high charisma high high quality high principle and then okay we got a, a very clear concept of god and also we got a very a correct a best example of person of prophet who shows us who is god so and, and i think this is a well structured institution and then i decide okay i am going to embrace islam so my advice to my fellow indian friends or oh no no I, i will what i will say is before you condemn or before you say anything about others especially those who are embracing islam make sure you know about your religion make sure you ask question about each of the thing that we practice in your religion very good and i yeah and what and, and the great uh, what actually i got some my process is very smooth actually uh whether it's my family or friends or anyone because basically i ask question with them before i embrace islam i make sure i answer all their doubt all their concern and then when they are satisfied with my answer okay krishna krishna is embracing solely for the purpose of love and peace and he already gave the answer and we unable to give answer for his question we just bless him so basically yes. everyone are yeah that that's not so a good thing that sorry i want to mm, say interrupt because sorry, uh yeah. that that is actually one of the challenges uh faced mm. by many new muslims as in mm. when they were challenged or posted questions by their non muslim mm. family or friends they 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 couldn't answer but for your case yeah. this is something that i think many need to learn from you as in when you are able mm. to 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 answer and also to handle their objections and their questions and they just went okay they they accepted yeah. you fully in a sense so i think that that's really great so I, yeah that's good that's good so i think mm. tonight um you really shared with us a lot and i can sense i can feel your passion <laughs> you can mm. you know uh, you 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 uh, explain and also told your story like from before until now um with so much of energy so much of inspiration and we need people like you we need people like you the new muslim at this young era young age that can actually spread the love and the message of islam in a very strategic manner and what more mm. you expert in digital marketing and communications so you are one of the yeah now i see why you are sent representing malaysia to attend the interfaith event in thailand Right so mashallah thank you so much um for your sharing tonight and i would like to ask if haji jamal got anything you want to add on um to the questions or to any comments that we have chatted no, so you. far thank you elen i think uh, we we heard a passionate uh, sharing by chris uh, tonight i think it is uh, fantastic and it's a lesson to all of us uh, uh, the the challenges that he's gone through you know uh yeah. i can understand uh we are born for example we are born muslims uh the challenge is different from someone who's searching for for truth and uh, at the end of the day is is for harmony uh, what is important is harmony uh, in a multicultural multi religious society like us uh, to understand each other and uh, we thank you brother chris for your sharing yeah Thank you thank you to Anjamal. Jamal thank you Cecil Elaine to yeah for inviting me to share my journey Haji Jamal actually, always, I, I would like yeah Haji Jamal always meet very interesting uh, personality a very interesting figure and bring them to the program <laughs> so <laughs> yeah but, but I'm truly I'm truly uh, inspired by brother Krish I, I seriously can sense because you just told your story like passionately like oh no keep on going 
and yeah. we, we need we need you um perhaps i think program one hour is very short to really tell everything i'm sure you have a lot more to share if you have like yeah, a portal sorry. or you have like you have any portal or page or anything on social media that you you can you know post on the axin facebook comment box later then most probably hmm. you know more followers can actually follow your story and also get more inspiration from you yeah that would be great so that we don't just stop here it can actually ongoing and follow your progress inshallah yes yes sir. so uh, just before conclude our session can i say a, a few a short points to my sure. to our viewers and non muslim okay i sure. just want to make a clear uh, sisland one of the many misconception or the things that i find out when i ask question have a dialogue with my friends family before i embrace islam is many of them uh, actually they don't know islam so what i can say is uh, if you want to learn more about islam ask those pros just don't assume anything yourself for example one of the concern of my my friends basically he was saying that hey chris if you embrace islam will you be a different person will you be a a uh, different guy like some of the other things who make bad of your original religion i just say to them okay don't worry what i am doing now is is for my spiritual thing is my very very personal thing i still the same krish you can call me by my original name as we we use we did i am still the same person who will speak in my mother tongue tamil i i i love it that's my root i still have my the same parents it's not going to be changed i still a malaysian I still being myself, so there is nothing going to be changed just by when I embrace Islam, and you you just don't assume or you just don't judge based on the people's activities or people other people or other some Muslims or converts action. Mm. So yeah. I will be me. So I will start after this. What I will do is I will do some awareness. both on non muslim and also on muala sujra what i am going to say with my indian muala especially is i will tell to them don't afraid because some of the wala what they did is because of already they even don't share to their own family after uh, after embrace islam for many many years i know one or two of them so what what i am going to do is we will do a sort of videos or do some of infography or related material to tell them okay why you should not afraid if your family ask okay what is your your original religion says what is islam okay you can use this material to give answer to them like how i answer my family friends and surroundings question so basically mm-hmm. i think that exposure we need to spread to our in, in my case indian wala especially so they can exam and also uh and yeah so basically we will do content related to and also to answer those misconception in a greater scale so they Excellent. know that so so they know that we are i'm not embracing islam just purposely for for what any agenda or anything it's spiritual and what is that spiritual thing excellent excellent look yeah. forward to and we pray to allah yeah. that you know your journey continuously will be blessed and make it easy for you and yeah i look forward to you creating content of islam in tamil So I think yes, that will be one of the good way yeah to to create content in that language in Tamil. Just one more one more sorry sorry Mrs. Elaine uh, I just want to share another interesting fact is uh, the Tamils especially because we we can hear a lot of misconception and negative thing from this Tamil section of Indian community they will say that Islam is a totally a new thing to our 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 civilization or our race etc etc but what i can say is actually islam is very close to tamil tamil people or tamil history for example in tamil nadu basically tamil nadu is a state in india country we have one of one of the the fourth uh, among the top four of fifth we have the oldest mosque in tamil nadu which was built during rasulullah era and was visited by ibnu batuta so you can imagine the 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 years is almost 1350 1350 so we have connection the tamils and the indians have already a connection with islam way way longer even during rasulullah era so i will say that okay don't just put any accusation or negative in it just assume that 
it's a it's a we got connection with everything right mashallah okay good good thank you so much so we will follow you on your page so that we can hear more so with that i would like to thank um again brother krish for joining us thank you, thank you. and thank passionately you. And I salute your bravery to fight and also, you know, against all odds to become who you are today. Now, may Allah bless you. And thank you, Haji Jamal, for bringing yet another interesting figure to our program tonight. Yeah, so thank you, Kamil and the team. And yeah, glad to see everyone who was online with us until now. So we see you again in our next episode of My Journey to Islam. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Assalamualaikum. 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 Assalamuala